So what we've been able to achieve is to determine a student's final grade, a mark that corresponds in terms of a letter associated with that grade, and maybe we want to know about how many students got a high distinction, how many students got a distinction, how many students got a credit, and can we list that as a percentage. Well, the best way to do that in Excel is to use the count if function. So here we've got some made up data which we get respect to students. I'm going to use the count if function. So what I'm going to do is type in the keyword count if. And it's asking for a range. So what's the range of cells that I want to count? Well, here's the grades that I want to count. I've got people listed in terms of failing, passing, distinctions, credits, high distinctions. So I want to go all the way from E9 and I want to scroll all the way down to as far as I can. The quickest way to do that is to hold the shift button down, which is like your left hand mouse button. Use the arrow button, which goes down, but also press the control. If you hold the shift, control, arrow down, it takes me all the way to the next blank, which happens to be the bottom of my database. Okay, if I do that, then I need a criteria. Maybe I can count all the people who achieved a Z or a fail in the subject. So I type in Z. And it tells me that 10 people failed the subject in this database. Now, there's a couple of issues with this formula when we're trying to start making it more efficient and automating the function. For instance, if I start copying that formula down, you'll notice that the reference starts to shift down because we're using relative referencing. So the quickest way to fix that formula is to put some dollar signs in front of the formula. So just by pressing F4, we're going to change that from relative references to absolute references. So now when I copy it down, it starts copying uh, in the right location, that function in terms of its range. The other thing is that instead of having to type in the P for pass, the C for credit, the D for distinction. You know, I'm, I'm already starting to make mistakes and it's really becoming a little bit tedious, I suppose. How do we get around that? Well, what I can do is instead of typing in the letters Z, P or credit, I can tell Excel to refer to the uh, cell values that have those values. And I've got, already got that before because I showed you one way of using the VLOOKUP command that references that. That's in a previous video. So what I'm going to do here is refer to D1, which contains the text Z. I'm going to then copy that down, and we can see when we get down to distinction, it refers to D4, which has the D corresponding distinction. Uh, if I'm in this cell here, F5, it's referring to the original grades, and it's referring to the H corresponding to high distinctions. So now I have the absolute numbers of students who achieved a fail, pass, credit, distinction and high distinction in the subject. Now you may want to list that in percentage terms. So let's sum up the number of students who achieved that grade. So we have 360 and I can express that in percentage terms. So 10 divided by 360 and that is about 2%, 3%. If I copy that down, you'll start to see that something goes a bit wrong there because what's happened is it's copying down the F10 and it's copying down the, sorry, the F6 and as I start to move down, that's also moving. So we want to fix that F6. So again, we're going to put an F uh, we're going to use F4, put the dollars in front of that, so that it's always going to refer to the number in F6. And here we go, copying that down now, you can see the F6 is always being referred to, the number of students who were in the subject, 360, so that it all adds up in terms of the number of students and the percentage of students falling into those grades. So hopefully you've seen some ways to use the counting function and relative referencing to calculate the number of students falling into particular uh, grade components and 
I'd like to invite you to my blog for more advice, tips and any questions you may have about large class teaching. Thank you.